They cheated. The Houston Astros of 2017 and 2018 cheated and won the World Series even though they cheated. That's so unfair. They should be stripped of their title and disbanded as an organization. Hey. Listen, no one can dispute that the Astros were stealing signs during the 2017 and 2018 seasons. Center field cameras installed for replay challenges were used to capture pitch signs that opposing catchers were putting down. It's been the subject of many reports, articles, blog posts, podcasts, and entire books. They cheated, it's true, but it's not that simple. And quite frankly, the entire media ecosystem that sprung up around the Strohs of this time period was, and still is, a little bloated. The poor Dodgers were denied a World Series championship because the Astros stole it from them, blatantly without warning. The Yankees were robbed of their chance to play in said World Series for the same reasons. Heck, Jose Altuve robbed Aaron Judge of an MVP too. People, it's time to let it go. The Houston Astros have continued to grow into a dominant organization that can't be defined by events from six years ago. They made it back to the World Series in 2019, 2021, and 2022 when they won it all. The last year the team didn't make the postseason was 2016. Excluding the COVID season of 2020, the Astros have a winning percentage of 632 since 2017. They have been, irrespective of the cheating those couple years, arguably the best team in baseball over the last seven years, only being rivaled, arguably, by the Dodgers. But many want to taint the Astros, and I do mean the current squeaky clean Astros, all because of those 2017-2018 seasons. Guys, again, hating the Astros is getting old, and it's a bit hypocritical, as we'll explain more later. But first, we need to take it back back to those fateful years. It all began late in the 2017 season, when Danny Farquhar of the White Sox was pitching at Minute Maid Park against the best team in the American League, the Astros. He kept hearing things when he was on the mound, a kind of banging, like someone was whacking the bat rack. Not all the time, just at certain times, like whenever the catcher put down the signal for a changeup, almost as if a camera in center field was filming the catcher's signs and relaying it to the hitters, relaying it to them by banging on the bat rack. That's what Farquhar assumed was going on anyway, so he got the catcher to switch up to a more complex series of signs, and presto, the banging stopped. Farquhar had gestured towards his ear, something the Astros saw from the dugout. Fear quickly set in. Had somebody finally figured out how, quote, the banging scheme worked? Were they about to get busted? Nope, at least not yet. The banging that Farquhar had heard were the echoes of a planted cheat that had started back in September 2016, when an intern named Derek Vagoa had given a presentation to GM Jeff Lunau about how the centerfield camera installed in 2014 for replay challenges could feed into an algorithm coded to steal the signs flashed by the catchers of visiting teams. Thus, Operation Codebreaker was born, and it was against the rules, something that Jeff certainly understood. Nevertheless, they tried it anyway. Pitch types and signs were logged into an Excel spreadsheet, and once the algorithm cracked the code, the information would make it to the clubhouse, so that runners on second base could relay the signs being thrown to the hitter. Not a perfect system, but obviously better than the time-honored practice of runners at second trying to steal signs on their own. That's always been acceptable, but anything short of that was looked down on, although there's been more than a few instances of it before the Astros. Binoculars in the bullpen have been the most prevalent historically. The Bill Veek White Sox, however, took it one step further and used a telescope from a building across the street. If the victimized team found out, the result was usually a brushback, a beanball whizzed near the ear flap to send a message. Steal our signs and your best player is going down. All in all, it wasn't taken very seriously, at least at the commissioner level. Centerfield cameras have long been able to look into a catcher's crouch, and teams have long had access to the feed. The White Sox in the 1980s had a staffer keep tabs on feed and steal signs, which he then relayed by turning on or turning off a scoreboard light bulb. So what the Astros were doing wasn't exactly novel, even if the method was new, since the invention of competitive baseball. Hitters have longed to know what's coming, to take away the element of surprise. What was different this time was that baseball had gone the way of each stadium having its own in-house studio to study replays. The Astros, in the hyper-competitive atmosphere that Leno created, were willing to bend the rules while using a data-driven approach. But there was a hitch. The runner method was slow and inefficient. The system could be improved. And so it was. The runner was replaced by simply using the replay phone in the dugout to call the video room for the signs. Then text messages were sent via smartwatch. It truly was a cheating method fit for the 21st century. Still, there was a lag. For this data to work, it needed to be delivered in real time. The solution? It came from two main sources, bench coach Alex Cora and aging superstar Carlos Beltran. Beltran wanted the signs faster, and Cora suggested installing a video monitor right by the dugout. No more runners, no more phone calls, no more texts. Player would watch the feed on the dugout monitor, and if there was an off-speed coming, they'd start banging away. That system began in June 2017, and lasted through the rest of that season and into the beginning of the next. Several caveats. Not every player wanted 
wanted to know what was coming, most famously Jose Altuve. Manager AJ Hinch was apparently not involved at any level. The scheme was player driven, but again, no player ever stood up at the time and said it was directly cheating. The players who allegedly got the most bangs while hitting were Marwin Gonzalez, George Springer, Alex Bregman, and Carlos Beltran. All of them allegedly got over 100 bangs during at bats, while Altuve apparently got around 20. The data on how much more effective these players were while cheating is inconclusive. Some seemed to thrive, but also had strong stretches at other points in their career. Regardless, it didn't seem to have the seismic effect that some fans think it did. But still, you probably can feel your anger rising at this point in the vid. How could they cheat so brazenly? Why would they think it was acceptable? And why am I not giving it the weight it deserves? Well, for starters, they weren't the only ones doing it. If you hate the Astros for using center field cameras, then step up and hate the Boston Red Sox, because they were officially caught doing it in 2017 and 2018 too. The Red Sox were just as sure the Yankees were doing it as well, and the Dodgers, as recent stories have suggested. White Sox pitcher Lucas Giolito said that he thought all of the playoff teams in 2017 were cheating. It was just the Astros who got caught, and only because pitcher Mike Fires started spilling the beans after he signed with the Tigers in 2018. Eventually, his story would end up in The Athletic, with him serving as one of the first and biggest whistleblowers of the whole thing. Fires forced MLB to investigate, and the casualties were many, at least among the management staff. AJ Hinch and Jeff Leno both were fired. Carlos Beltran was set to become the Mets manager, but the commissioner's report tanked him as well. Alex Cora was suspended by the Red Sox for a year. However, and this is where it gets admittedly dicey, no players were ever punished. That's obviously wrong in our opinion here at MTC, especially for a player-driven scandal, and we would even have sided with the idea of severe punishments, a la year-long suspensions or a lowered salary cap for the organization. It was proven they cheated, and they deserved punishment, period. The next season, because they couldn't cheat anymore, the Astros slid back to the mediocrity of the early 2010s. Once they didn't know what was coming, they saw a swoon of their offensive numbers and tailed off dramatically. They've now slid to the level of the Pirates or Royals. Wait, wait, that's not right. They actually didn't seem to regress at all in the following years, arguably being as dominant, if not more dominant, than they were during the cheating times. And here's our first clue as to why hating the Astros for what they did in 2017 to 2018 is pretty corny now. They didn't see any significant affectation of their numbers following the scandals, and neither did any real individual players either. George Springer, for example, he had a big year in 2017 with 34 bombs and 85 RBIs, while hitting 283 with an OPS plus of 141, with the aid of said trash can. Would he slump following this? Not really. 2018 wasn't as good as 2017, but then he came back in 2019 and had his best year ever, with 39 homers, 96 RBIs, and a 292 average from the leadoff spot. His OPS Plus was a career best 150. Same with Alex Bregman. His 2017 numbers were good, with an OPS Plus of 125, 17 homers, a 284 batting average. But even after the banging scheme, Bregman would blow up in both 2018 and 2019, where he finished top 5 for AL MVP voting both years. He's dealt with injury issues since, but remains a force at third for Houston to this day. The Astros won over 100 games in both 2018 and 2019, and went deep into the postseason both times. The 2018 squad was taken out by the Red Sox, who went on to win it all, and in 2019, they took the Nationals to the seventh game of the World Series before the heroics of Howie Kendrick put the final nail in the coffin. 2019 was interesting for another reason, accusations of again stealing signs against the Rays during the ALDS. Tyler Glasnow was on the mound, and the Astros were getting hacks that they knew what was coming. Were they at it again? No. Glasnow was tipping his pitches because of how he was holding his glove. The Astros were doing what ballplayers have done for over a century, grasping for any edge. No cameras involved, just sharp-eyed people in the dugout. But then, Jose Altuve took a role as Chapman deep to walk off the Yankees in Game 6 of the ALCS, and when he rounded third, he implored teammates not to tear off his jersey. Because he was wearing a buzzer to help his teammates steal signs? Or was it because his wife told him not to? Funny as that seems. Or because he had an unfinished tattoo he wanted no one to see? All these explanations swirled around, and we never did get a concrete answer. But let's not forget, Altuve was only mildly involved in the sign stealing during 2017. It's doubtful he would have wanted to lead a different controversy. The Astros and Rays would have a rematch in 2020 during the ALCS, an epic battle that went to the seventh game. The Rays had gone 40 and 20 during the shortened season, while the Astros had stumbled to 29 and 31, having barely snuck into the playoffs, something pretty unusual for them. Randy Rosarena and the Rays won this round, en route to their World Series loss to the Dodgers. Still, with a little luck, the Astros could have gone to the World Series for four straight seasons putting them in the company of the 1950s Yankees dynasty, who set the record of five straight appearances. The Astros didn't regress after the mild disappointment of 2020. Instead, they again became elite, heading back to the World Series in 2021 when they lost to the underdog Braves, and in 2022 when they beat the underdog Phillies in six games. This game is turned upside down! If the 
Astros had managed to beat the Rays in 2020, they may have gone to six straight fall classics, which would have set a new MLB record. This is one of the best teams in the history of baseball, and some trash banging from half a decade ago doesn't change that. And hey, again, let's remember something very important. The Astros weren't the only team accused of stealing signs at the time. Again, in 2018, the Red Sox were convinced the Dodgers were stealing signs, all but accusing them of doing so in the World Series. This ended up being hilarious later, because the Red Sox were found guilty of doing that exact same thing after MLB concluded an investigation in 2020. Wait a second, who was managing the Red Sox in 2018? Who was that bench coach in Houston that helped with the banging scheme? Yeah, Alex Cora. Did Alex Cora import this nefarious scheme to Beantown? Like in Houston, Boston had someone studying the center field feed, especially when runners were on second. That person was JT Watkins, who headed up Boston's advanced video team. Watkins studied signs and got information in the dugout, who got it to the players via movements of the head. So no banging this time. That's one more team to hate now, mind you. The 2018 World Series champions. Perhaps we should strip back-to-back -back titles. And honestly, if you dig deeper, there is talk that many, if not most, MLB teams started using those replay cameras to steal signs pretty much from the minute the power on switch was activated in 2014. Even though the rules were clarified in 2018 for all the teams, it's believed that at least a few teams kept doing it. We don't know exactly which, but that was the prevailing consensus at the time. Is it fair to keep hating on the Astros for cheating when it was most likely pervasive in the game? If you answered yes, Consider this, why are you tarnishing what the 2022 team did because of what happened in 2017? Who's even left from that time? Of the players on their current roster, only Lance McCullers, a pitcher, Jose Altuve, who refused to participate early on, and Alex Bregman, one of the faces of the scandal, but again, someone who succeeded massively since, are on the team still. That's it. Everyone else has been traded, retired, or left as a free agent. This Astro team looks nothing like that one did. So, why'd they do it? Why would the players involved risk jeopardizing their entire legacy? Many have pointed to the stature of Beltron, the player who seems to be the most responsible for the scheme overall. There was a theory that the players were too afraid of him to tell him to back off, even though former Strolls shortstop Carlos Correa denies that. Correa claims that Beltron was a great teammate. By the way, there's another player who succeeded massively since, Carlos Correa. Regardless, younger players spoke of being too intimidated to speak up, what with so many people involved, including their own bench coach. Unless you're Jose Altuve, a certified superstar, you had to go along or risk being alienated from your own team. It doesn't make it right, but it certainly makes it understandable. Some people might continue to hate the Astros because this awesome team was put together by a GM who allowed the cheating to fester and who did nothing to stop it. Jeff Lonhow denied knowing the details, but since he deleted texts and emails during the 2017 investigation, we don't really know what he knew. Lonhow objectively fostered the creation of one of the most impressive of teams in history, and his mark has stayed on this team even since his departure to some degree. He signed or traded for 19 players on the 2022 team. However, frustration towards this falls flat in my eyes because even though Lundhau may have drafted a player like Kyle Tucker, that doesn't mean Kyle Tucker deserves to be thrown into the cheating scandal of 2017. The same goes for any other player tied to Jeff and his influence. It's not their fault. The stigma that continues to tarnish the Astros must end at some point. They did cheat, but most of the players involved are no longer with the team. They did tarnish baseball overall, but so did other teams in similar ways who are either barely caught or not caught at all. The Astros of today deserve a fresh start. They hit baseballs hard and throw gas. What they don't do is cheat. Jordan Alvarez doesn't need to know what's coming to be a great hitter. It's easy to be cynical about cheating and baseball overall. Yes, the sport is flawed, but so is life. Remember, all that's right about baseball is represented right now on this Astros team. So please, the next time Jeremy Pena takes an at-bat, remember he was in college back in 2017, and so were half of the other players currently on the team. Maybe, just maybe, they deserve a second chance. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you have a great day, and remember to check out this playlist for more content just like this.